Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Avi Fisher, returning guest. Uh, He's here joining us from Abbott, and he's going to be talking about uh, recent FDA approval of some next-generation defibrillator equipment. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Avi Fisher. Thanks for returning. Thanks for having me back, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. For our guests who may not be familiar with you when you were with us before, tell us a little bit about yourself, doctor, and talk a little bit about your work there at Abbott. So I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist uh, by training, which means that I'm a cardiologist who has a special expertise in treating abnormal heart rhythms. Mm -hmm. Uh, And my current role at uh, Abbott is uh, that I'm the chief medical officer of our cardiac rhythm management division. What is an arrhythmia? As obviously you said, it's, it's these abnormal rhythms, but what is arrhythmia? How many people are affected and what makes them so dangerous? So an arrhythmia... Uh, is is uh, is a term we use for any abnormal heart rhythm, uh, and they may occur in the upper parts of the heart or in the lower parts of the heart. And um, when we think about the um, the arrhythmia and, and whether it's dangerous or not, often we think about the origin or the the location that the arrhythmia comes from. And the arrhythmias that are most dang- dangerous are the ones that come from the lower parts of the heart. Uh, what we refer to as the ventricles. These are the the parts of the heart that are responsible for pumping the blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. And when there is insult to those uh, those ventricles, uh, most often from heart attacks, uh, from infections, from other insult to the heart itself, there can be extra circuits that develop in the in the tissue. And when a, uh, an extra circuit is there, the heart is predisposed to beating very, very rapidly. Uh, and therefore, the amount of blood the heart can pump due to the rapid beating is decreased. And ultimately, that can lead to a cardiac arrest. So these are dangerous in that these are associated with cardiac arrest or sudden death. Uh, and, and, and when you ask how many people uh, are affected or, or, or what is the scope of this uh, condition, well, so let me start by saying that cardiovascular disease remains the number one uh, uh, cause of death in the United States and many other uh, developed countries. And in the United States alone, there are uh, approximately 350,000 people a year who suffer uh, cardiac arrest. So, so the scope and the magnitude of this problem uh, is quite large. Uh, and, and, and defibrillators, which is a topic we're going to touch on, uh, were developed specifically to treat uh, these type of dangerous heart rhythm problems and reduce the risk of death uh, associated with uh, these these very rapid uh, and and dangerous uh, ventricular, lower chamber of the heart, Mm -hmm. um, these ventricular arrhythmias. So how exactly do they work? You said that they were developed for treating them. How do they work in actually treating these uh, rhythmias? And how does this next generation improve upon that? So they work um, very simply. They, they deliver a, a very large amount of, of energy directly to the heart itself. And I think we've all seen on television and movies, you know, when somebody has a cardiac arrest and, and you know, 911 is called and the paramedics show up or in the emergency room. You know, we've all seen that you put the paddles on, you say clear, you shock the heart. So that that was that that is defibrillation, uh, and and that is what happens uh, in emergency rooms and in locations when an individual does not have one of these devices implanted. Uh, and we we see external defibrillators on the walls in airports, in locations where mm-hmm. people tend to gather because most of these events that occur occur when people are carrying on their, their, their daily lives. They, they occur when people are walking around and people are just living normally. Um, so the, the way these devices, uh, the implantable devices work is the same way. So they deliver very uh, high voltage energy to essentially reset the heart. Mm-hmm. The devices are implanted uh, in the left upper chest. So just under the, the, the collarbone through an incision that's maybe two centimeters or so in length. It's a very um, simple uh, uh, procedure in that it's performed under mostly local anesthesia and just a little bit of relaxing medication. Mm -hmm. It takes an hour or so to implant. And then the the recovery period is quite short. Patients are are either discharged same day or 
the next day, you know, the next morning after uh, um, recovering overnight in the hospital. Uh, and these devices that are implanted in the left chest have a wire connected to them that actually uh, snakes its way through the veins and, and sits inside the heart itself, inside the heart muscle. And the wire monitors every single heartbeat, every single second, minute, hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the lifetime of the device. Okay. Uh, and, and when it looks at these electrical signals, it can detect when a cardiac arrest, uh, when, when one of these arrhythmias occurs, mm -hmm. uh, and, then it acts, and then it acts to treat it. It initially acts by treating it painlessly, uh, by stimulating the heart very rapidly to attempt to interrupt that extra circuit that I described. And if that fails, uh, it then delivers the shock we discussed uh, as well. You know, what, what makes this sort of next generation here, and, and, and I think what, um, what we're really excited about with, with the Gallant device uh, is that uh, it uses technologies that I think we're all familiar with uh, in our lives to change the way patients and, uh, and caregivers are interacting with one another and the way these devices behave and provide that information to the physician. So these devices, uh, the Gallant devices, use low energy Bluetooth to communicate with a patient's smartphone. Huh. We've created a specific app that uh, uh, can, be, can be put onto the, the individual's, the patient's smartphone. Uh, it's available in, um, in, in the iOS platform as well as the Android platform. And the, 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 the smartphone, the patient's smartphone acts as the communicator and the bridge between the device that's implanted and the caregiver. Mm -hmm. And all of the information on a daily basis uh, that's recorded by the device, whether it is how the battery uh, capacity is, whether it's any alert conditions, whether it is to remind the patient when their next appointment is or when the next transmission needs to be, all of that information is readily available to the patient and the, and the smartphone, which downloads that information from the device, then communicates all of that data directly to the caregiver very rapidly within minutes. And, and so we've, we've changed the way physicians and patients are interacting and engaging uh, with these devices. Are the same candidates who were good candidates for traditional defibrillators, implantable defibrillators, are those the same good candidates for this next generation, or has the face of the good candidate changed with these advances? The, the, uh, the, the, the patient profile remains the same. So mm -hmm. defibrillators are indicated in a particular patient profile, as I described patients who have had insult and, and damage to, to the heart muscle itself. Mm -hmm. And so the indications themselves haven't changed, mm -hmm. but what's changed is... Uh, you know, the, the, the engagement, the patient engagement in that they now not only have a, a device sitting in their chest, but they have a way of looking to see how the device is functioning, how the device is, is working day to day. And by simply opening the app on the smartphone, a patient can look and see, okay, well, everything is good with my device. So there's a, a certain ease and, and peace of mind that the patient has knowing they're protected, knowing they can look to see if the device is operational and working and, and continuing to monitor. They can see if there are some conditions that maybe occurred uh, and were identified by the device that they did not necessarily feel, uh, but that data, they know that that data gets transmitted immediately uh, to their caregiver. Uh, so so the, the overall patient profile is the same, but the way the patient engages, the way the patient behaves, and th this is very contemporary, right? We all live this way in 2020. We all like to be focused on our own health, on our diet, on our exercise, and engaging the patient really takes things to the next level here and empowers the patient. Avi, we'd love to learn some more about this technology, these upgrades, and the recent FDA approval. Where can we go online and get some more information about Gallant? Well, we, we do have a website. Uh, it's uh, abbott.com. Uh, and, and on that uh, website, um, there are lots of resources that we have available uh, about these products, about our other products, uh, and in general uh, about, uh, about the company. Uh, as you know, and as many people know, 
but we're a very diverse company uh, with lots of products uh, within the cardiovascular space, uh, as well as beyond, um, you know, in diagnostics, nutrition, and other areas within healthcare delivery. Well, Avi, I thank you for returning. As as always, you know, 10 minutes is not even scratching the surface of such a, a vast uh, topic. Glad uh, that you gave us the website. We can learn some more. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. Well, thank you very much again for having me, Neil. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be on your show, uh, and I look forward to returning soon. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Avi Fisher, Divisional Vice President, Medical Affairs, and Chief Medical Officer for Cardiac Rhythm Management at Abbott. We've been talking about recent FDA approval of Next Generation Gallant. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.